Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on Arrow Season 5. So this is going to be my review for Episode 11 of Arrow Season 5, otherwise entitled Second Chances. But obviously, before we go ahead, there will be spoilers within this review, so if you haven't watched it, you might want to go watch the episode because a decent amount of stuff happened within this episode, so uh, yeah, don't get spoiled from this review. But if you do go on to enjoy the video, be sure to leave a like on the video, be very much appreciated. Make sure to leave in the comments what was your favourite part of the episode, maybe what was your least favourite part of the episode. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, you might want to consider doing that uh, to keep up to date with all my videos. So at the end of the last episode of Arrow, we saw Black Siren dealt with, locked up in Argus, with Ollie saying that he will live up to the promise that he made to Earth-1 Laurel last season, before she died about finding a new Black Canary. Which led to a quick scene where we went to Hub City and saw a woman use a sonic cry to eject two piece of shit humans, like you just gotta be honest about it, from a bar. And that is where we kick off in this episode. So as I have predicted and mentioned in a couple of videos, this new Tina character got her abilities from the Particle Accelerator incident in Central City. She was screaming at the time, which is obviously why she was given this sonic scream ability. As we've seen in the past on Flash, when people are doing certain things or in certain environments, when the Particle Accelerator hit them, sometimes they got abilities associated with their environment or things they were next to. They really did try to like drive it to the audience in this episode that the addition of this new Tina character wasn't to replace Laurel, but to continue and carry on her legacy and the mantle of Black Canary. But I guess that really comes down to different interpretations, like one person might interpret it one way, another person might do it another way, so yeah. We learned that Tina was a former member of the Central City Police Department before the Particle Accelerator incident, but quit shortly after due to her partner's death. We get a quick cameo of the Flash just to prove to Captain Singh that he is the legitimate Green Arrow and not some dude with a voice modulator just trying to mess with him. Unfortunately, this did get spoiled uh, last week by Mark Guggenheim, so I was a bit annoyed about that. This would have been a cool moment if it didn't get spoiled by him. Now, we see that uh, Green Arrow and Wild Dog actually find Tina in room 511, which is a little bit of an Easter egg to the episode, as this episode is 511, season 5, episode 11. Now, Tina's goal throughout this episode was to get revenge on the people responsible for her partner, Vinny's death. Now, the boss of it all is known as Sean Sonus, or in the comics, he is more commonly known as Discord. And he is like a Green Arrow and Black Canary villain. He was actually created by executive producer Andrew Kreisberg, so it's a throwaway villain that, you know, can be sent as a metahuman, so why not chuck him in? The powers of Sean Sonus were trippy as hell, though. Sort of like what people experienced when they were affected by the drugs of Count Vertigo. Like, that's the earliest or, like, the quickest similarity I could draw from them. It is surprising there isn't more metahuman villains popping up in Arrow, saying that Central City and Star City are so close. But I guess we have to go to Hub City to face another one, apart from that one from Season 3 and, obviously, Double Down in Season 4. But I do understand why they don't do it, because if Green Arrow is finding metahuman villains every single week, it would take some of the grittiness and realism of the show away. But I think having them every now and then is a good addition to the show. Now, the girl that Felicity meets up with says she is a part of Helix, a hacking organization. Now, Helix is a group in the comics, but I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with hacking. Like, I think they're like, like metahumans or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. I've heard of the name before, but then nothing to do with hacking, I'm pretty sure, from the comics. It's some sort of like mutant or metahuman group. Yeah, whatever. The fight on the rooftop against Sonus and his men was pretty decent. There was some silly moments in it, though, mainly with Ollie when he was grappled to the helicopter. It was just so obvious. Like, he was just, he was standing up way too straight when he was flying through the air. I was like, okay, that looks a bit silly. That could have been done a bit better. But overall, it was a decent scene. It was good to see Diggle get free from jail again, thanks to the intel that Felicity got from that girl. But she also uncovers some other stuff which that Helix member gave her, which... I'm assuming we'll get uncovered in the next couple of episodes. Hopefully this isn't what they meant by Felicity having a dark story arc because she's going to be going onto the dark web and doing all this hacktivist stuff again. Because if they did that, then I think they've just like sort of baited and switched people. But we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But the flashbacks this episode, wow, we learn a lot. We learned that uh, Talia was actually the trainer, like she trained Yao Fei. And if you don't remember who Yao Fei was, it's Shado's dad or obviously the guy that trained Oliver for the most part. She does give a bit of a cheeky wink and hint to the Lazarus pit when Ollie's asking, like, she looks so young, how could she have trained Yao Fei? And she says, oh, we have our ways, it runs in the family or something like that. Obviously because she's been uh, 
dipping into the Lazarus pit every now and then to keep her youthful looks. Talia brings out the list, saying that, Ollie, mate, we got some Constantine Kovars, some Baron Riders and stuff, all in this book. Your dad gave this to you, gave this to you, sorry, for a reason. And it's obviously what spurs Ollie on in season one. So you do see the connecting tissue really coming out in force in these flashbacks now from what we saw uh, Ollie do in season one. So I'm really enjoying it. And speaking of massive connective tissue in the flashbacks to season one of Arrow, Ollie gets his suit. Obviously, it looks a bit different because he has like the longer hair. So the hood's a bit more puffed up, I guess. But wow. And he also gets the bow that he used in season one. Now, last episode, we saw that Talia was holding the season one bow. So we'll just, it was eventually going to be given to Ollie, but I guess it gets given to him earlier than we all expected. So this is going to be pretty cool. We're going to see Ollie going around as Arrow or the Hood in the flashbacks, you would have to think. So I'm excited. But the flashbacks were the best part of this episode. I enjoyed them so much. And I don't think I've said that since season two, that the flashbacks were the best part of an episode. So that's insane and crazy. But was I the only one that thought that? Because I love the flashbacks in this episode. Now to end the episode off, we learned that Tina Boland was actually a fake name used to protect her family and that her real name is actually Dinah Drake. So you might be thinking, okay, Dinah, I've heard that name before. Dinah Laurel Lance, okay, I've heard that name before. But who is Dinah Drake? Well, in the comics, Dinah Drake is actually the first black canary. Now, what happens is, I'm just going off the top of my head here. Dinah Drake was the first black canary. She gets married, which makes her Dinah Drake Lance. And she was part of the Justice League and stuff. And then they changed it around when another reboot of the comics came around. And they made her daughter, Dinah Laurel Lance, the black canary that was a part of the Justice League. But then when the new 52 came around, which was 2008 or 9, something like that, maybe 2010, something like that, they made Dinah Drake the Black Canary. Like, I think she was called Dinah Drake Lance, but then her husband died, so she went back to being Dinah Drake, something along those lines. But essentially, Dinah Drake is the name of a Black Canary, so they've used this so she actually has, like, some entitlement to being called Black Canary. So there isn't some controversy where there's this random character called Tina that is Black Canary. Now, does this sort everything out? No one should be complaining about it. No, there's obviously going to be controversy around this. It's going to be interesting to see how they play it out for the rest of the season. I think calling her Dinah Drake is actually, could actually worsen the situation that they're already in with the controversy around this new character. Like, I think if they actually kept her Tina and just called her Canary then I don't think there'd be as much controversy with her, with them actually calling her Dinah Drake and making her Black Canary. So, yeah, I haven't read any social media stuff in regards to the reaction of this. I saw some stuff earlier where apparently it got leaked on Reddit or something. I'm not too sure, but I saw some people's reactions to it and they were not happy at all. And it wasn't just Laurel fans either. It was actually Olicity fans as well because I think they're scared for some reason. I'm not too sure. As I said, haven't read too much of it. But I guess like the general assumption from them is that they think that the show is actually going to make Green Arrow and Black Canary a couple now in the form of Oliver Queen and Dinah Drake. So if that does happen, then I don't know what the show's done because the show's just pissed off two fandoms. So it's a fandom explosion, but as I said, it's going to have to play out for the rest of the season. We'll have to see what happens. But yeah, this could be seen as a big uh, moment in Arrow's history if uh, this uh, massive piece of uh, crap hits the fan, if you know what I mean. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see how it all plays out. But overall, I thought this was a decent episode. I think, like, the Tina stuff was okay. It was okay. Like, um, I didn't love it, didn't hate it. I just thought it was okay. But the flashbacks, they were so good. I love the flashbacks in this episode. I really am enjoying Talia al Ghul. Uh, just who thought Talia al Ghul would have such a big influence on Oliver? Who, who thought that would be the case? So, I really enjoyed them. And I am really looking forward to more Talia in the flashbacks and just seeing Oliver in the suit in the flashbacks. So I wasn't expecting that. I just thought we we're going to get him running around just doing more Russian Bratva stuff. But this is awesome. But thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to leave a like on it. It would be very much appreciated. Let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite part of the episode. What are your thoughts on Dinah Drake being revealed as the real name of Tina Boland? And obviously, they're going to call it Black Canary now. You'd have to think they would. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe. I'll catch you later, guys, and goodbye.